I was thinking, cooking is one of those things I'm sure if I was compelled to do I would actually be quite good at, like motorcycle maintenance or schedule meditation, or living a life pretending to be a happy office worker laughing at coworkers' puns and nodding along to the level of ideas that literally a baby could have shat out so the norm police don't get you. But as with all of them, I just cannot be bothered, so here I am eating vodka on toast, riding a motorbike that's last gulp of engine oil was bought from the Shah, a zen as a cup of coffee that's addicted to amphetamines, and exiled from living Bob Belcher's TPS nightmare and being a functioning member of society. So what am I saying? I'm saying cooking's a facet of the man? Am I saying the government want me to cook? Am I saying George Orwell's 1984 was all about how cooking will take the place of God and everyone will be expected to cook and be really happy about it? No, I don't think so, but this week's moan is more about how I resent this expectation that I should be able to cook because I'm in my late 30s, 20s. You know, when someone says they can't cook, I look at them and try to figure out if they've got some sort of brain damage because if they haven't, they're lying and liars make baby jeebus cry because really anyone can cook. All you need to be able to do is follow a fairly simple set of instructions. Then again, I was once known as the shelving unit murderer, so maybe I should shut my mangled teeth. I'm not saying chefing is easy. In fact, go into almost any restaurant and you can kind of tell it isn't. Imagine if the car industry had the same sporadic clouds of quality some restaurants seem to have, floating around like a wet fart and then suddenly gone when you open a window and burn some toast. Sorry, the brakes aren't great, the usual prep chef isn't here. Or, yes, you asked for your new Velocimeter to be painted glossy silver, but we brought it to your Matt Gray because that's the way it's meant to be done. Toyota really should set up their own chain of seafood eateries. But I'm not criticising professional chefs, really the opposite, standing in a hot kitchen for 60 or 70 hours a week, staring into strips of murdered vegetable, animal and mineral, keeping all the orders listed historical, from cheese to peas categorical, like a bomb disposal expert with both hands on the wire and a combination of diarrhoea and hiccups. Michael Winner with his 18 toilets and his silvery good looks got it right. Calm your fucking tits, dear. It's only food. Blast a lobster in the microwave for two and a half minutes, stick an onion in its mouth and you'll be fine as long as you say it's meant to be like that and you cover it in butter. Yes, that is my impression of Michael Winner. What of it? I'm sure he's not rolling over in his jewel-encrusted grave. I like good food, but all that time in prison, I mean the army, I mean college, and my general can't be asked attitude means that while the delights of making a lovely corn lasagna or free-range brioche with organic French soup accompanied by a compote, I think that's the right word, of suburberries, does beckon. The time that all takes usually sees me opting to just eat grass. If it was good enough for the sixth army, it's good enough for me. What's that rotting horse? Put it in between two pieces of bread and slap some ketchup on it, and you've got yourself a proper Finder's beef burger there, mine Freund. But to be honest, it's not all laziness. It's just that I seemingly value my time differently to most horrendously class pons jockeys. Cook, you villain! If it really is true that cooking is more healthy, maybe there'd be more appeal, but seeing as most people seem to rely on Babe Ruth levels of salt and Alan Sugar levels of sugar, sorry, to produce any taste, I think I might as well keep on eating lettuce leaves and raw tomatoes. But maybe not. I'm not sure, but I do think that despise is the word I'd use for people who cook for each other in lieu of doing something fun. How about this? How about instead of me coming to your house with the cheapest bottle of wine that I can find that frankly you may turn your fat butt nose apart, but we all know you'll be coughing down like you're on fire in two and a half hours, and instead of you stressing about whether the partridge has had enough time languishing in its own juices, like when it was alive it kept going on about there being no god and now it has to spend an eternity in hell, and everyone just do something fun and then go to a restaurant afterwards and someone who knows what the fuck they're doing can cook and by fun I mean get away from me. Why don't you come over for dinner is a question that should always be answered with the following statement. How about eat first, you don't sweat it and then we watch a film, play on the snares, go skydiving, shoot up bottles in your backyard, go pig wrestling, have an orgy, write a manifesto, play Russian roulette, make collages of Roger Federer, but literally do anything other than listening to shit going in and out of each other's mouths. And therein lies my principal problem with cooking, although I also realise I've defecated all over the dinner party as well like a mad ant and an incredibly obedient minor bird. But there is so much onus put onto food, not because it's a function to keep you alive and able to swing a pickaxe in his lordship's acid mines, but because doesn't it taste nice and ooh, what culture? But sidewalks and toilet design are also part of a national or regional culture and they don't last for 15 minutes before they're gone for half a day only to reappear as the least desirable sandwich spread since Guinness Marmite. Just a thought. Calm down dear, these aren't 